This video will describe how to insert source and destination signal arrows into your schematic designs. Source and destination signal arrows are used to connect two separate wire ends virtually to enable the SDS toolkit to treat them as a single continuous wire even when the wires are located on different drawings in the project. You might also know these symbols as off-page connectors. You can insert either the source or the destination signals in any order that is convenient. In this video, I'm starting with the source signals on the three-phase bus. After the command is selected, you are prompted to select the wire end for the signal. You do not need to select the very end point of the wire, just select nearer to the end where you want the signal to connect. The signal source code dialog box is displayed and you are prompted to enter two values and select the arrow style. The most important part of this process is the code value. This must be a unique value and must match exactly with the code on the corresponding symbol. Try to make the code as descriptive as you can. These will be used frequently in your project and a descriptive value will enable you to find the matches easier when editing your project. In this case, I will enter 138 KV West bus dash C phase. This is a simple unique code that is descriptive of the circuit I am working with. For the description value, I will write out the C phase verbiage. This will be somewhat redundant, but will show you where the description values are used. Next, choose the style or graphic you want to use for the symbol. Four styles are available out of the box and you can create your own custom style if needed. When you select OK, the Source Destination Signal Arrow dialog box will prompt you to insert matching arrows now. This is very helpful if the matching signals are on the same drawing, but cannot be used if the signals are on different drawings. I'll repeat these same steps for the other two wires. Notice that the wire number of the wire is automatically assigned to the signal as well. With the source signals inserted, we can move to the drawing where the wires are continued to place the destination signals and link the wire ends. Selecting the destination signal command, you are again prompted to select the wire end. In the insert destination code dialog box, you are prompted for the code description and style selections as before. As mentioned, the code is the critical component. You can simply type in the matching code value, but I strongly recommend using the tools provided to copy the values and establish the link. The recent option is the easiest since we just finished inserting the source signals. Select the desired code from the list and the description value is automatically copied as well. Lastly, you select the style you want to use for the destination signal. It can be different than the source. If the two wire types are different, you are prompted to change the destination to match the source. This only works on the initial insertion of the destination arrow, and it only works when you start with the source arrow and move to the destination. Next, I'll repeat the process for the other two wire ends. Notice how the cross-reference data is automatically assigned in real time, describing where the matching signal is located in the project. Surfing to the source signal, you will notice the cross-reference data is updated there as well. That concludes this video. and Be sure to check out the SDS Toolkit Cable Fan-In Schematic Tools to learn how to fan in multiple wires into a single cable marker and add source destination signals at the same time.